So um, let's go on with the other part, which is called uh, adding walls constraint to levels. And then, you know, we can go on to the other parts. Now, the thing is uh, that sorry. So uh, in the in the wall itself, you know whatever the RCC panels or double wall size systems you are going to create, it will be created out of that wall systems. So you need to know how your wall behaves when you create one, and how you are going to constrain it level to level, or up to roof level, or up to levels. So like um, like. Uh, you can even stretch a wall from level one to directly up to level roof level. But then there are repercussions for it because in the between you're going to put slabs also. So you need to understand that how you're going to assemble the entire building. So if it is a panel by panel, you should go through level to level, like level one to level two, level two to level three. So over here, if you see, there is a wall, press tab. This is a wall which is stretched from level 1 to level 10. Okay. Now if I put, or if I change here from level 1 to level 2 and I come out, this is a real length, real height of the building which shows that it's 4000 mm over here. So this is a one way of controlling a wall height or wall panels. But then there's another way also, attach top base. So the moment I click this attach top base and I select the at top, a floor, this thing gets stretched up to the top. But then you cannot no longer able to change anything from here to here. This gets grayed out. So eventually if I check here now that it should be level two. Now it is not from level 1 to level 2. It is from level 1 to roof now. But over here you see base constraint is level 1 and top constraint is level 2. Eventually even if I am going to say level 6 and go out, nothing will happen. Okay, because it has been overridden. Okay, these are called level to level no, wall constraint. Plus, if in the elevation, I go to this elevation, not elevation, and over here you see this elevations? Okay, I'm going to click it and I'm going to drag it. Okay, left click and then dragging to the other end. Okay. And the same thing I'll do this with this. Now uh, always make a notice that these things will should not go inside. So you all you should always you know put it outside this parameter. So here tab and then click it. Tab. I think it's pin, that's why it's not doing it. Right click, select all instances, visible in view, and UP, UP means unpin. And then select tab, tab, tab. Are gone away? See? Now it is getting above. Okay, so because of it was pinned, that's why it was not uh, coming it up. Now over here, this is the thing, one part, and if you go down, I don't want to see it here. So I'll go tab, tab, click it, and I'll create a elbow to it. 
and I'll put an elbow and I'll say go here. Okay, this is one part. Now if you see in the north I have done it, but in the south it is it is the same, right? It has not been done anything. So just in north you click this part because I've just changed this part only. So, okay, click this part and over in the con contextual tab press propagate extends. It will copy to the south as well. Press OK. So when you go to the south, when you go to the south, you will see the difference. Okay? Because this grid is viewing differences were view specific. Grid in, in itself was a 3D parametric thing, but its viewing pro uh, preferences were view specific. That's why it was not a change, a proper change. Okay, so over here, what I wanted to tell you is, if I change by mistake the level height from here, or I have draft to here, okay, the entire wall which is situated towards level one to level zero to level one is also going to be get disturbed. It is also going to get stretched out. Why? Because it is linked and constrained. So every wall is wall to wall constraint or you have done this attached top or attached bottom. If you have not done attached top and attached bottom, then it is always wall constraint. Why I'm telling you is why it's important is whenever you're going to create a model, you will find these problems. When you have done this, you know, that you have attached to the bottom, uh, to the top of it, and then you're trying to change the wall length and, you know, this top and base constant, it will never change. And then you will uh, understand, then you won't understand then why it is not changing it. So this is a reason that it, it must have been uh, aligned to the roof or the bottom. Okay. Undo it. Now second part. Add in place mask. We are going to do it afterwards because it's, it's a advanced portion. Working with elevation views. So I think uh, working with elevation views is this part only, which we have shown up. So over here, I don't need to see this part, right? I just want to have this part. So I'll go and I say crop my view and show my crop region. Crop my view and show my crop region. When I go here, this is my crop view. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to put it here. Okay. And then put this part here. Okay. And this part here. And this part here. Now this becomes my complete view, which I have to show to the people. Now let's cover this part also. I don't want to show this you know, crop view region, but I want to crop it. That's a one part. Now south is there. Okay. Now if you see on in your browser project browser part, there is a sheet option here. Okay. You go to right click and select new sheet. In the new sheet, there is a one metric right now you have. If you go to the load part load option, you can see in US metric, go to the down part, there is a title blocks option. Double click it, you have A0 metric, A1 metric, A2 metric, A3 or A metric. Okay, so that's how you go. You can load these parts of the things into your part. So I'm just going to say, I want to load this family. Now this is also one kind of family, but they have different, different types attached to it. I'll press open, okay, and I have two, now I have two options to select from. First, I will select A0 metric. I'll press OK. Now, this is a, now in the CAD, you used to have a model area and a page layout area, right? I think it's a layout area. Over here, there is, the, inside a project browser, you would be having sheet areas in which you can create sheets. So, I'm what I'm going to do is, in sheet, okay, the moment I have clicked one sheet, I'll press plus button. You see, there it comes A01101 unnamed. Right. I'm going to click right click and I say new sheet. I want to add a new sheet as an A1 metric. I'll press OK. Now there are two types of A101, A102. Over here, if I put DI, DI is for dimension. If I click here, click here, 
it shows how much 594 if I go to 101 di click here from here click 840 so it exactly refers to the thing so it this is a0 right I'll rename it okay and I'm going to say a0 name plans press ok now that's how I'm creating it okay now the rule of sheeting only one view can be imported on one kind of a sheet you cannot create two types of sheet two types of views in a single sheet like if I if I rename it and I say it's a1 and uh, plans I'll say elevations elevations and sections press ok so over here if you see in the plan this is my plan okay plan sheet now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say level 1 should be incorporated here okay now I click here this is my level 1 okay now this level again cannot be inputted here the view is already placed on a0 plan so this is a rule of it you cannot input huh? in you cannot input again a same view eventually eventually not just in a single sheet when you are in an elevation sheet as well you can't put a a1 here also so one view for one sheet okay but now let's supposedly I want to create level one view as different for furniture plans different for layout plans different for some other plans so what should I do is right click duplicate view and duplicate with detailing the moment I do this I have a copy of level one exactly the same way but over here I'm going to change it I'm going to say rename and I'm going to say level one site I'll press ok over here I can see the site but when I go to level one here and then then I'm going then in the a normal level I'm going to press VG okay and over here I say I don't want to see topography okay I press ok now this is a simple level but if I go to level one site this is a site level but both are the same levels okay so when when we go to this plans and elevation section sites plan site so over here I have this one now see how substantially it reduced now I change it I'll click and put it here and over here I put level one site as well see so that's that's the way we can incorporate two different types of levels into a single uh, sheet now now this is not going to be get inside into it right so there are two ways either you can select this part open it up and change its scales or you can double click it okay the moment you have double clicked it it's an active active view over here now the view control bar that you're seeing now is not of sheet it is of the view itself so this view I'm going to change this to 1 is to 100 to 1 is to 200 okay and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say deactivate view now see it becomes a smaller part you can put it here similar fashion I can select this and I can say double click or right click cursor active view and then you say scale is to 1 is to 500 oh so tiny so I write I right click and I say deactivate view now there are there is a certain thing here whenever you are creating us you know a, this kind of a sheet there is a title view inside it this level one site is there right and then there is level one here here also now you will find a little bit tricky when you are selecting this you can just control the length of this line you can't really move it 
because you would be end up moving the view itself so in order to move move this uh, line you have to you have to first uncheck it like escape and then select this line separately without selecting the view itself what happened krishna giri people able to understand yeah yeah ha uh, ab agar ek mic on karte hain then if you see here now by just selecting it now i can change the position of the title bar okay okay sab so sore have a water it's not interesting this is not interesting huh It's not interesting. It's interesting. Ba Ravi ba. Now for Harish, for Harish uh, is not interesting, right, Harish? No, I don't want to interrupt. This is very interesting. Oh, <laughs> first positive thing from him. Okay, right click and then active active view. Now you know that in this case scenario, we don't really do not need this elevations. so we can select it right click select all instances visible entire project yeah visible in view okay and then right click hide by category or by elements doesn't make any difference okay now if i go to this deactivate view now this becomes more good how i'm going to select this and i'm going to place it here okay and then i'll select this and i'll change its length now another thing here is a big surface right we need a planning as well like we should put in proper certain grids so there in the view part you go to this view in this view there is a guide grid option under sheet composition there is a guide grid option you click this guide grid option it will ask you what would be the name of this guide grid because guide grids can be different for different sets of sheets because your detailed views will not be of of same uh, scale as of your plans and elevation and site plan are so obviously the grid spacing the divide div, 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 division of your entire sheet would be different according to different uh, scales so here i will say let's have a 25 cm or 25 mm grid okay or 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 or, or 100 mm sorry yaar i am copying mr spiros sorry <laughs> 100 mm grid okay press okay and see see what you seeing nihat he is giving such a tough look <laughs> now thing is this is a 100 mm which we do not want obviously so we can have a other guide grid also by of a different name create a new and uh, we'll say not 100 500 mm 500 mm and press okay now you know what happens this is not like that there are two guide grids no there there are no two guide grids if i go out of any command and check the instance property of the sheet itself okay here if i go down you see guide grid it's showing that right now the guide grid is 500 mm active over here on this little boy pointer is there click it and you will see there are two types of guide grid that we have created one is 500 mm second is 100 mm okay click this 100 mm come here it will change no changing one second one second one second no no we have just changed the name we have not changed the dimension itself so if you see if i select select this part now we first first see which dimension is it's 500 mm right select this part ever here you see guide spacing is there the instance property of the grid itself now this is a living example i made a mistake just because i have not followed five principles of revit that i have told you yourself myself so this is a one of the mistakes that i did so the, the, i i am the guy who told you this you know, five principles but i am not able to you know, you know follow those so that's what i'm saying i am emphasizing that these five principles needs to you to also always reminding so this instance property if you change here you change here and you say 500 mm and get back see right and and the same goes with the other part also 500 mm 
change it to 100 mm go out select it okay select this and change it 100 mm okay now. this is more important more good right so now there are grips as the grips that you have been able to see in the section box or in your annotation crop or your uh, normal crop these uh, nodes have to be adjusted from here to here from here to here and from here to here okay now why they are there this grids will not be printed on your sheet but when you have a set of sheets like 100 sheets are there and every plan and elevation elevation plans and elevations are there you would be having a fixed distance from left and fixed distance from right with this grids you can plan your things in a, in a always in a same manner but the problem is right now if you see the sheets there's always a different different uh, you know setbacks or the margin levels set out because it's not actually planned it's just they just input it so over here if you see i am just going to select it and i'm going to say i'm going to put it in the this grid part of the part, part okay and then i want this to be on this this part that's it and i click it i change its length so actually if i am if i am going to press ctr plus p for control and i want to say i want to have a preview this would be the side preview and you know no matter you have 50 details in here everything would be organized everything would be organized so now i have created two types of guide grids right now these two types of guide grids can be applied in several sheets so all the sheets having plan with having uh, scale of 1 to 200 will be having a 100 mm guide grid all the details uh, sheets who is having a scale of 1 is to 25 or 1 is to 50 will have a guide grid of 25 mm or 50 mm depending upon our you know workflow but everything would be standardized and every uh, plans would be having equidistant from downside upside and the grid pattern would be followed okay understood see the thing was that i needed to tell you about the elevation views I told you how to create a sheet as well, which is not good, but uh, we have covered it, right? Well, uh, the sheet is like, you know, it's a big area. So I just showed you because uh, eventually we are going to start up with this project so that you should know how to create this views as well. Okay. Second is adjusting elevation tax. Now we are in a sheet. Let's create a one beautiful thing that's called elevation tag. Sorry, elevation tags with elevation plans and sections. So if you hear, if you see here, you know, in your level one, okay, I'll go to this. Now you know that we have hidden what? What we have hidden? What we have hidden? Yes. So we are going to say, open up the bulb and please reveal the hidden elements. I'll select it. Now this all are hidden, right? I select this. I deselect it. Now I right click it and I say unhidden view by elements okay now the thing was i have hide it with the elements so that's why it will unhide with the elements if i would have hide it with the category it would have unhidden it with the category understood no shaker is saying right and it, everything is going above my hand <laughs> above his head shaker I know it's not that interesting as Bahubali, but right click, select all instances. <laughs> what? What Biju said? Biju, why you are so uh, unethically silent? Why you don't speak at all? Huh? What happened to you? Talk, man. Man, talk. <laughs> Whatever, talk. I am not able to even see that Biju is there. Huh? Yeah, Krishna Giri people you able to understand any problem? No, 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 no. No problem. No, no, everything fine. Everybody fine, comfortable sleeping, huh? Um, 
Okay, okay, okay. Let's 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 move on. Let's move on. Okay. So uh, my question, my uh, thing was that I'm going to unhide these, you know, elevation, uh, you know, symbols. This is a symbol. It comes under symbol, but basically it is the annotation part. So okay. So I'm going to click again to come into the normal view. Over here, if you see, there is a dash. There is a dash here. What are these dashes? It just shows that this dash. It just shows that this elevation is not yet placed on a sheet. Okay. Eventually, if I am going to create a section from here to here, okay, simple section. You see here. This is dash dash dash. This is dash. Means it has not yet been placed on the sheet. You go to right click, go to go to view. You see, you will see this lines and all. Okay, but this is obviously you are not able to understand what it is. What what we are going to do is over here in this in in the down part, elevations are there, and then you have some sections are there, right? Now, in this elevation and section part, I'm going to input this section or some some say sub, I want to first input east elevation. Now I click it here. Okay. Now this east elevation is there. I'm I can do two two things. I can right click and I can activate view and I can change the scale, right? Because if you see there is no in view control bar there is no scale. The moment I activate, then I can you know if I if I they activate. Then I get this scale thing, but if I don't want to do that, I'll say deactivate. I go to this east part, okay. Double click. I change it from here. I'll say I want it to be one to five hundred. Okay, the, only the annotation will get enhanced. I'll go to the north. I'll say I want to one to five hundred. Okay, south. I'll say I want one to five hundred. West. I'll say one to five hundred. Okay. Sections, I'll go and I'll say one is to five hundred, and section two, I'll go and I'll say one is to five hundred. Now see very clearly what will happen in the elevation tags category. This has got smaller. Now I'm going to change its length. Now, if I change here, if I say <coughs> north, come here, okay, south, come here, west, come here, okay. And then I say I want a section as well. Come here. Section two as well. Come here. Okay. Now, if you, if even if I am going to put it like this to here, I need some kind of measurement to put it right. But if I am having a guide grids, it would be easier for me. So I just say go to this instance property as I have already matched the guide grids. I said make it to 500 mm. <coughs> It is there 500 mm. I go down. I don't want 500. I want 100 mm because they are small, 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 small things. Okay. Eventually, I can change a new guide grid as well. I'll say I want to have a new guide grid which is not this, but I want to have 50 mm. Press OK. Now this is a new one, exactly, but it's not 20 50. It's 25 by default. So I'll change it. I say 50 mm. I go out. It changed, right? And then I'm going to select. I'm going to select this here. Over here. Over here. Over here. This to here. This to here. Cool. अरे बोल भी लो यार स्पीक वाई यू आर क्रिएटिंग इट सो बोरिंग हा आई नो यू आर फीलिंग बिजी बट इनिशिएट सम टॉक अदरवाइज यूल गेट बोर्ड एंड यूल क्रिएट बोर्ड इन अदर पीपल एज वेल सी इफ यू सी आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू क्रिएट दिस पार्ट हियर ओके नाउ इट बिकम दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट ओके यू नीड टू अलाइन इट प्रॉपरली टू द डायमेंशन और टू द बॉर्डर ऑफ इट you will get a correct thing but if you see here i can input it here you can input it here
Now obviously I gotta have to change this and this, their you know annotation crop as well for them to come onto the proper line. So it, it, it takes time, it takes time. But guide grids helps you to do the process very easily. Now if now here, if I'm going to print a CTL plus B, okay, and I have a preview, the sheet is ready. See, the same alignment they are coming in. This is not coming in, but this is coming in. This is coming in. So if you use this guide grids in all the elevations, all the sections, all the shop drawings, if you're, your every view, every sheet would be same, having a same standard. And now you can see in AutoCAD and Revit how easy it becomes. In, in elevation points to guide, guide grid, huh? points, and you can elevation points say bottom left corner of my elevation should come in this guide grid location. Yeah, you can, you can, you can. You can pin yes, it. Yes, 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 yes. That cross. You, that you, cross can't, it. you can't pin it, but you can no, snap it. You can snap it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So can we can show, can move it by yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you are moved by MV. We have this command called MV. I have told you there are three types of move, right? First is, huh? Tell me. Dragging. Dragging. Second. Snap. What snap? It's MV. Third is dodge. What do you mean dodge? Dodge is you know. To dodge something, dodge. nudging, dodge. It's just like you know, do not crunch, jump. If a if a soldier instead of crunching, crouching, sorry, sorry. If instead of crouching he jumps, he's going to die. It's not dodge, it's nudge. Okay, it's nudge, yeah. So yes, obviously you can do this if you see here. If you go go select it and uh, MV, okay, so this see, this is snapping properly, so and obviously this is also snapping, so when I, if I want, if you want like this, this part, okay, I've, I've just selected the uh, intersection, you want this part to come exactly to this part, exactly is going to come like that, so you have a better control, over that. obviously, yeah, but it's not going to get printed out, okay, now, the main difference which is going to show up is now level go to a level one and you see here in your level one what is showing a1 is a sheet number and the one is a viewpoint number the viewport which has been allotted to so that they can reference it automatically now you see you don't need to do this manual work it automatically goes up if you see go go above it's called a2 level two second second detail on the a1 sheet would be of northern elevation. So if I go down and I select this elevation view, elevation and sections, this is an A1 sheet, right? This is A1 sheet. And over here, the second viewport would be of north. See? Okay. I go to this level one. Uh, I'll be Laga Sapo. Huh? Go here. If you see this, if you see this, this is showing, now this section is there, it's showing, it's, it's on a, A1 sheet, but it's a sixth number of detailing. So if you go here, this is the A1, and you check sixth, this is the sixth. So whatever changes you're going to make here, it's going to get changed automatically in your sheets. You don't need to again recheck it. Whatever you, kind of a change you are doing on your plans, on your sections, on your elevations, on your schedules, everything is going to get changed. I've shown you schedules, right? You were there. I, I have shown you how the schedules are also interlinked with all of your stuff. So eventually, we'll, we'll take up schedules afterwards. So schedule, those so sheets is completed? Huh? No. Did you? You understood? Anyone, any problems, any questions? You can uh, now make a sheet, right? You can create sheets now. Nihal, what? No, you are in doubt. <laughs> okay, let's come to the other part. So adjusting elevation tags was the question. 
So adjusting elevation tags. Now you're able to understand this. These were your elevation tags, and now you're able to populate this elevation tag. Okay. But if I say I want to change this tag not to be of a circular, but of some different part. So what you're going to do is go to this insert. Okay. Go to this load family, and under the load family, under US metric, go to annotations. In the annotation itself, you will find some elevation mark. This is a body square. This is would be the representation. Okay, inside there would be a sheet number. Outside there would be a uh, the view number that would be on that sheet. Okay, we can have this elevation, or we can have this elevations, or we can have this elevation, or we can have this elevation. So I like this one. So I'll press open. Okay, and then by clicking this part. Okay, I go to this edit properties. And this in under edit properties, there is a elevation tag. This is 12 mm circle. You check and you say, I don't want this part. I want the there are lots of parts. Custom detail number. Press OK. OK. See. When you change it, it changes for all. Now this is a sheet number and this is a view number. Okay. No problem. Now one more thing. If you select this part, you see what is this? This. What are these? These are the crop view extents. Crop view extents. So if I say I don't want to have a crop view over this part, this will get negated, and you will just get the outside part. How? Let me tell you. I go to this. I'll. This is what south elevation. Go to the south elevation. Press W T. Now you you can't see it, but if you see, there is no cross button here, so it means it's a crop view. If I select do not crop view, you see the entire things comes up, right? So right now the moment I said do not crop view, and I go here, and again select this, you see the difference. There are no no more extents are there. There is only a view range of from here to. How far you want to see? Now that is called clip view range. That is called clip view range. That uh, you, so in either in walkthroughs, either in your cameras, either in your elevations, either in your sections, you are going to determine the clip view range, and that clip view range will be shown here in your instance property. If you go down. Over here, there is a crop view. There is a crop region visible, annotation crop, and there is a far clipping. See this far clipping offset twenty two thousand six hundred. See, right? You you can't see it, but this is a there is a crop fire far clipping. If I if me here, if you see, there is no clip right now. If I change it, if I say I want to have a clip without a line or clip with line, I press OK, press OK. See. Okay, you didn't see it. If I select it and I say no clip, I'll press OK. Okay, the moment I said no clip, okay, so it it takes a default default, and this area get grayed out, grayed out. You can't change the clip options. But if I select it and say I I want a clip with line, press OK. This things is there. Now the what's the difference? If you see here, this is this was the elevation, right? This is a south elevation we were talking about. We'll go here, select it. You see here this small little thing. This is showing up the clipping range. This is the clipping range. Now the be careful about annotation visible range, your crop view range, your view range, and then your clipping range. Please write down. Please write down. There are some different types of ranges. Okay. First is crop crop view range. crop view range second is annotation view range third is clip view range clip view range fourth is view range in itself view range view range then there are 2d extents and there are 3d extents okay After to uh, write it down um, in front of 2D extension, 3D extension in bracket. It is for 
grids datums grids and levels your view range is for plans only for plans okay and your uh, your uh, crop view range can be uh, there in the plans also in the elevations also yes so but view range are not at all uh, applicable on elevations or sections they are applicable only on the uh, elevations part sorry plans part plans part okay so so now, now if you see here if you see 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 on the on the on the screen have a look at it this view value will be changed if i change this if you see if i selecting i change here see now it's changed i i know you would not be able to see it's it's nine it's no, no, no. right now it's 33000 something okay and if i change if i click here if i change this to this part okay now the view clip range is is from 33000 it changed to 92548 okay now it it's, it's a complete visibility now how how this will work this clip view range ke aage likh lo after clip view range uh, write it uh, important in cameras important in cameras and your walk throughs important in cameras in your walk throughs elevations sections because when you are going to see your elevation section certain things you will not be able to see visible then you will have to check its clip view range okay now over into the q80 part quick access toolbar i go down and i say camera okay i'll click camera and i going to say my clip view range here it would be started and here it will be ended now what exactly i am doing is i am determining the clip view range that this is the origin points and where this camera is able to see okay if i select this part i won't be see anything the inside of it okay if i change here if i click here this is a camera view right a perspective camera view is there now over here i go down okay there is you see there is a far clip offset of 63 60 65000 something i'll click here and i say i don't want to have that i want to have a 20000 20000 i go out you see you see the portion of the landscape but you not, do not see the building itself because the clock uh, far clip offset is changed but if i change here and i say i want to see a complete part i'll say 120000 go out see the actually if you see you were not able to see the entire building at that time you were seeing the part portion of the building 50000 and go out <coughs> volume column only okay but here also you have you can play with the visuality graphics as well as i have told you what elements you want to see in camera what elements you don't want to see in camera or you just want to see a uh, furniture layout in the camera so just right click select all instances and isolate category okay be inventive in that case scenario so if i change here i say 50000 ki jagah 80000 75 78000 go out see and i say 150000 go out the entire portion is there okay in a in a similar fashion when you are going to create uh, this uh, camera view inside interiors so how much you want to see how much detailing you got to have to do you have to incorporate now more importantly the further you move your clip range the further your performance will slow down because it has to do the image graphing the computer has to do the image graphing it ha- there are certain fps frame per uh, second that frame per second has to be like if you have 50 50 frame frame per second it will be slower if there are 60 frame per second it would be faster so when you going to put it and then you going to render it so computer gets slow a little bit slow okay so now the good thing is if you go down here and the uh, where it is 
They are 3D view, right? There is a black view, 3D view one. Okay. If I go to this any any elevations and sections view, okay, and I can incorporate this 3D view into my sheet. So you select, you drag it here. Yeah, Krishna Giri people, any problem? I, I know you have time till 5.15, okay? So shut your box and listen. Oh, hello, your voices are getting recorded. What is it? Now see, these are called BIM sheets, okay? Or I prefer to call them BIM sheets. So if you see here, if you select the preview part, it looks good, right? And it doesn't take me more than a minute to create these things. As because obviously I was explaining you, it took me time. But in order to assemble me all that, I'm going to be thing. I don't need time. I need intention. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important, it's right? Cool. You understand the far clip offset options also. Okay. So I can go on. Can you see? This is the adjust elevation cropping. Okay. That is I've told you about. Elevation cropping I have told you about and the extents I have told you about. The view, visibility graphics. Then there are adjusting level heads. Okay, now level heads. Now the same way that we have adjusted the elevation tags, same way we are going to adjust the level heads. Like, I have, I have explained to you also, right? If you go to this elevation view, not an elevation view, and uh, make it again. Now the thing is, if I am going to change anything here, like I have put like 1 is 200, you go to this back here also, it will, it will be changed. It will be changed. Okay. So you need to be very careful. That because here, one thing changes, everything else changes. So Patalaga, you have fixed up your entire sheets and all, and then you started changing on that other part, and then this all get wasted. So that's why it is recommended that you activate view inside the sheet itself, do some changes and get back. Do not do it off site, do it on site. Okay. The same way, if I go to this elevation view, east elevation view, so you know east to south, west, yeah. Over here, this is the head. I click here, I can create an elbow as I have told you. I can create 3D to 2D extents as I have told you and I can change visible the head or not from there. Plus, this I have told you about, right? Plus, over here, insert, I'll go to this insert, load family, and over here, annotations, and I can, the same way that I've done an, for elevation, I'll be doing for a level as well, level head, okay? Press open, now select it, edit properties, go to this, uh, elevation base, no, 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 not this, symbol, go to this, the symbol and say triangle and press OK. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. So that's the way you're going to change the different, different heads according to your standards of your project or your office is using. So that's how we're going to create, completed the adjusting level heads as well. Creating a section views as I've told you, right? Right? Yes. Oh. Thank God for your yes. Creating and adding schedule views. I've not showed you this, but it's very easy. You have, you know that right now we have just created one schedule, right? We have or not? Topography schedule, right? So here in the in the elevations or in the plans in the plans here, you can you can just drag it, okay? <coughs> By default, it gets open up. Huh? See, this is your schedules which we have created and we have incorporated in our plans. Easy? Okay. You can you can do it like here also. Like the moment you select it, select it here. 
okay and you know you can do one more thing over here you can change it right but there is also one portion where you can divide it so you can create like this okay cool right you can change it according to yourself if you don't want it so you, there is a move option here go to this move option and drag it on the same portion so that becomes a one thing okay that's how we completed the creating and adding sheet sheet schedule views now sheet views and the cartoon set i have showed you now the cartoon set means the complete bunch of sets of sheets as i i now showed you how to create a sheet views and the cartoon set okay now creating a sheet list let's see this easy go to this here view okay in this uh, view uh, schedules there is a view list or not there is a sheet list yeah you click this sheet list okay and over here you say se select that what you want like you want a model name or you know assembly name okay add what you want current revisions you want you can add you are so early very i am you have to remind me that we have crashed so um here sheet number sheet uh, name sheet numbers then guide grids obviously you can put it in your sheet list and then who drawn who revised who checked so like what you do manually earlier now you can do it automatically the moment you create press okay the next thing would be you would be having your sheet name your sheet number your guide grids plans and elevation this and this is this and now you can always change you can see there is a field option in your instance property edit it and then you can select which which one you want like description and model we have not selected checked by we can say but we have not yet uh, you know inputted a form uh, information we need to input in uh, information as well plus design drawn by sheet issue date you can put in sheet issue date but that's not a problem so it's okay see this is a sheet issue date 5317 you don't need to do it yourself okay it is done it it is automatically done okay so you can create sheet views now right now in the same similar fashion i have to oh oh the river yeah krishna giri people you able to understand yes yes got to leave now is the why you are scaring us with such sounds okay this sense so just go just this is going to get concluded now the the same way you can add a sheet list as well you click here and you can have a sheet list here right sir sir five fifty is over right what five fifty okay 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 bye i am concluding already <laughs>